All right, hello and uh, welcome to another episode of my design stream for To the Halls of the Storm Lord. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop a link out there. And we'll be off. All right, uh, so let's take another look here. Uh, so to review um, from last time, I'm working on this OSR module for the game Macchiato Monsters, which I've learned will be uh, released uh, fairly soon. The final release will be out soon, uh, so that's quite exciting. Um, I've also learned that this will be possibly the first module written for Macchiato Monsters, so that is also pretty exciting. Uh, but uh, yeah, so what is it about? Well, it is a dungeon crawl module with character funnel elements, as I say. Um, and it is about a group of adventurers who are duped by the uh, Valkyrie, Uglahildur, to um, go and try to destroy the storm lord or storm giant lord Arnmunder, um, who has taken over a dwarven fortress by ramming his sky fortress into it um, and <clears throat> is using a elemental portal that the dwarves constructed in order to uh, in order to construct um, a god slaying spear uh, so the adventurers are going to go through basically three stages of play here. Uh, they're going to scale the mountain, then they're going to explore the Dwarven Fortress, and then they're going to enter the Sky Fortress and confront Arnmunder. Possibly. I mean, uh, I don't want to railroad things here, but that would be the sort of suggested uh, progression. Um, yeah. So, aside from that, um, I did want to sort of briefly uh, talk about uh, what we did last time, right? Um, so last time we came up with some design goals. Um, and the design goals were to make sure there is high lethality, uh, so make sure that the characters actually die because that is part of it being a character funnel, right? Um, and because if characters don't die, then this mechanic here, which, which I've developed, um, will not trigger and then that would kind of be disappointing. Um, so really need to make sure that's the case. Of course, we don't want to make it, you know, Tomb of Horrors or some stupid nonsense like that, but you know, there should be a fair number of opportunities for characters to, uh, to die. Um, because this is an OSR game, I want rest and supplies to matter. I don't want them to be things you just forget about. Um, so especially rest is something I want to put pressure on um, by sort of aggravating the weather scenario or the weather situation progressively. Um, I want to show the force of nature, so so I want to show the storm, the storm and work. Um, I want to respect the dice, but remember the core conflict, so include sort of a balance of, of randomness with meaningful uh, story hooks and like a skeleton for the uh, module. I want to make non-magical treasure setting evocative and fictionally useful, but I don't want to overdo it. Um, so don't include too much treasure because um, we are playing with Macchiato monsters, so there's no need to sort of like overload the amount of uh, treasure you get because XP is not driven by treasure acquisition, it is driven by goal fulfillment. Uh, so compared to some other OSR games, uh, we don't necessarily need to include as much, but I still definitely want to make it 
um, something you can manipulate in interesting ways and something that uh, does like some environmental storytelling. Um, aside from that, uh, I want to make the opposition follow from what Shathurazan was and what the chaos has caused. So um, Shathurazan, including the, uh, the fortress of Shathurdum, uh, you know, we, we need to think about what kind of place that used to be and then think about what kind of denizens would be there. Um, and then from there, uh, add in, uh, you know, like elementals and, and all like, you know, the, the servants of the giants and all these other sort of agents of chaos that have been thrown into the mix. Um, and then finally, I want to think like a disaster movie director, right? So this is kind of like show the, show the force of nature. Uh, but um, basically want to, to think about uh, scenes and, and points where we can, we can dramatically show these things off, right? Um, this should be... A stormy and chaotic experience it, it shouldn't be uh you know sort of nice controlled uh crawl through this dungeon so last time uh we we took some notes on writing um i said i didn't want to lean too hard in physical and mechanical language so some osr games do that um but i'm not going to do that and uh I also don't want to be verbose, so I want to be to the point because I don't have much room to work with. Um, also, uh, we took notes on the Final Girl Game of Love, uh, which is a uh, one of the other uh, we're one of the games in Codex, um, and so I'm using it as an example for writing. Uh, and I said that I should address the GM directly and concisely to communicate new concepts. Um, so, you know, instead of beating about around the bush and speaking in passive voice and that kind of thing, there should be points where, um, I introduce something with a direct, uh, address to, uh, the, the GM, uh, just to save, save space and also to be more, uh, eye-catching. Um, so Blake is asking, by scenes, are you talking about describing zooming in or around the action to highlight the tension? Uh, that's an interesting um, question. I think given the, uh, given the, the basis of this game and sort of the OSR, I was more thinking about like having interesting set pieces that would allow for those those points to be highlighted um there definitely is the possibility that the the gm could uh cut to a different scene showing what uh the giants are doing or what ugla hilder is doing um but i don't intend to really like include any of that in the uh text of the uh scenario um yeah so so I'm thinking mostly the camera will stick with the, the PC, so to speak. Uh, but I want to have set pieces in there that are going to be uh, sort of fodder for the GM to show off what's going on, uh, if that makes any sense. Uh, right, so to continue here... Um, Give very brief examples, uh, possibly if the Einherjar are mechanic. Uh, yeah, so um, this would be about uh, addressing the GM to say, here's what we're doing. This is what the point of this whole mechanic is. Um, and this one, uh, we might do this with uh, I don't know. I'm not sure where this one's going to come up, but it's something to bear in mind. Um, so next we have give narrative suggestions for play phase transitions. Yes. So uh, what I'm talking about with play phase transitions is like moving between uh, these different areas. And also um, 
what happens when characters die. Uh, those would be important phase transitions in this module. Um, and uh, don't be too prescriptive. Yeah, so because, especially because um, this game allows the, the party to set their own goals, um, I don't want to be too prescriptive about like what happens when you move from one phase to another. So for example, um, I'm kind of thinking about like in Neverwinter Nights, uh, Shadows, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, what is it? Hordes of the Underdark. Yeah. Hordes of the Underdark. Um, when you go through Undermountain in that video game, um, you get to the end and the wizard who's in charge of Undermountain, I don't remember what his name is, I'm sorry. Um, he just basically is like, uh, yeah, I'm sending you to the Underdark now. Um, and that's just how things are going to be, right? So we don't want to do that. Uh, we want to allow the GM and the players to figure out uh, how they approach these things. Uh, and that, that also goes for the conclusion, right? There's not going to be like a box text like, and now the adventure was concluded. Um, so we're going to use tables to communicate genre information, uh, especially like random encounters, uh, the weather, um, that kind of thing. Uh, provide explanation by example when communicating unfamiliar concepts. So. I'm not sure what this is going to be yet, but uh, the point here is to to give a little bit of extra text uh, to explain things that that the player or the GM might not be familiar with. So, for example, um, you know what is an Ein Harriar? Uh, do players roll whether or encounters or the GM? Uh, so that's a good question. Let's find out. Let's take a look at the text. So, Monsters and Encounters. The referee rolls. The referee rolls an encounter risk die. So yes, this is the GM's, GM's role. Uh, I mean, I don't think it would matter that much. It's certainly open to the group, but as far as the text of Macchiato Monster says, um, that it would be uh, the the referee or the GM that would, would do the role. Um, and I believe that also applies to weather. Weather. Yeah, it doesn't say here, but I assume that's also the case uh, with weather. All right. Um, and using tables to communicate genre information, be specific, right? Always be specific. So um, if we're including something on the encounter tables, it should be something interesting. It shouldn't be like, you know, one of the weather options is cold. That's boring. Let's talk about like, you know, ice storms, right? That's, that's more interesting. Um, let's, let's not talk about, uh, so one idea I have for the, the mountain, mountainside encounters, uh, is that the party might encounter, uh, a group of elves, who have come to take a look at what's going on. Uh, and so I don't want to say a group of elves. I want to, you know, kind of give them a, a few specific details that will help to uh, spice things up. Um, and yeah, describe key NPCs by their attributes and a brief context for action. So like, what kind of thing are they and what, what might they do? Uh, and these are the notes I took from... Uh, the wreck of the void hatred uh so as far as the setting description goes at the start of the module uh the things we want to talk about are what happened and what do the characters know uh which is important for the uh setup um rules description uh we're mostly going to be using macchiato monster text uh but there will be 
some rule modifications around the tables we're rolling specifically uh, and the way that death works. Um, so these rule, rule modifications should be clearly set off from the rest of the text so it's easy for the GM to find them. Uh, then uh, we're gonna have general area descriptions. Um, so this would be like uh, these, these three areas here. Um, and we're going to include clearly marked paragraphs to describe rules interactions specific to the area. So there should be uh, location information and then followed by that a separate paragraph about how the rules work in the area. Um, so for this module, um, we need to figure out when specifically the GM is going to roll weather, right? Because what it says in uh, here is every day the referee rolls the wrist die and looks up the weather on the table below. But if we're not doing um, overland travel, it may be difficult for the, for the GM to decide that. So it may be something that we decide um, every time the party rests and at and, and and when the party travels from uh one major setting to another major setting in the module i think those would be good break points for re-rolling the weather uh, we don't want to overdo it but uh i think those are fair um describe specific areas so what kind of things that are there to roll because it's osr we're going to have like you know uh there are um, like 1d8 dwarves in the room, right? Like, you know, that kind of thing. That's, that's how these, these modules are typically written so that there's a little bit of, of variability um, to make things interesting. Uh, we're gonna include some situations to describe. Uh, so for example, in Wreck of the Void Hatred, uh, one of the kitchen boys uh, died when they fell into a pot of stew. So that's just like a really striking image, a uh, comedic image. And we want to have those kind of like striking images that we can throw in there. Uh, we want to describe points of interest, not every room. Um, yeah, because we don't have time or we don't have the space to describe every room. And I also generally don't find that style of writing to be very compelling. Um, if you look at June 2's Floating Ice Hell, you can see that the ship is broken down into these micro locations. And this is just like, it, it's like, eh, like what good is that as, as a GM? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's some style of play where that makes a lot of sense. But for me personally, it's like, oh, do you want to check you know, room one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. That's just too many options. It's not interesting. Uh, there's too much detail. Um, so I don't want to do that. I don't have space for it. And I wouldn't do it anyway. Um, and uh, unlike uh, the Wreck of the Void Hatred, I want to include some environmental problems to overcome. Uh, so traps or, um, you know, because of the damage that has been wrought on the fortress, like obstacles to overcome, uh, basically things that require problem solving, not necessarily like puzzles, like I don't want to have like a sphinx asking questions or some terrible thing like that but i do want to do the thing uh that they talk about in the principia apocrypha about um having problems that the that offer the players uh two different oh, excuse me that's just some asshole out there um so the yeah having problems that offer two different fairly obvious but difficult solutions and then like a third hidden solution that is somewhat easier to to solve uh, and uh, have the environment and items evoke and allude to character relationships so we want to 
Um, you know, for example, we had uh, the boy falls in the pot in uh, Wreck of the Void Hatred, but there's other other sorts of things um, in that module that really sort of get at like what the relationship of the crew was, what kind of life they had. These kind of like mundane details can be really good for designing um, an environment like this. Uh, and yeah, this is like Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls is so good at this kind of environmental storytelling. Um, then uh, we have uh, maybe some tables with a guiding mechanic. So this is something that Richard did in Wreck of the Void Hatred that was really cool. Um, the way to think about these for me is a custom move like in PBTA plus a clock. Um, and this is uh, especially the case in Macchiato Monsters because they use risk dice. And when we look at um, Kazarak, we'll see some nice examples of how to use risk die there, or, or risk dice there. Yes. Okay. Um, and treasure. Uh, I think there should be around three significant items to be found, like really significant items that are set off from the main text for easy reference. Uh, that's what uh, Richard did. It was really good. Um, and this should include their context, uh, their background, their location, and their uses, but relatively little about the background because um, we don't have a lot of context for this module. It's not in an established setting or something like that. Uh, more about where it's found, what does it look like, what, uh, what kind of affordances does it have, and, and what are the rules for the item. Um, and we can include stat blocks for uh, monsters and the denizens of other denizens of the area uh, in the tables, in the random encounter tables, uh, instead of having a separate page for stat blocks. Uh, because when are you going to want to reference those? Well, it's probably when you actually roll them up. So in that case, why not just include them in the table and save a lot of space? Um, and uh, yeah, there will be some mandated encounters. Uh, so are the item ta are the item tables sourced? Like, hey Fred, why would George be interested in this item? Are the oh like uh, you mean as in are the item tables something that? they can select from or are they purely random what what do you mean by that oh ideas from the players uh no 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 uh no these are this is um this is a OSR game, so no, it's it's not like that. Uh, it, it will be something that is uh, included in the module and certainly open to the group interpreting, but it is, is not going to be like a uh, series of questions for the group to uh, define what the item is. Uh, yeah, because that would be like much more of a thing you would find in Dungeon World maybe. Um, but uh, what my experience has been with this kind of thing in the OSR uh, is that you the creativity, um, you find the creativity in integrating stuff that is in the module into the, the overall story that you're telling with your group. Um, so the, the way in which this works is um, by making the items very specific uh, in their uses and, their, and making them very distinctive. And if that's the case, then uh, players, it, it gives the players an opportunity to sort of think outside the box and use them in unusual ways. And there's creativity to be found there instead of creativity in um designing the items from scratch uh from scratch uh yeah 
so so that's a kind of different philosophy for how we think about the character relationship or the player relationship to the contents of the module um i hope hope that makes sense uh yeah it's it's uh it may sound like it is being very like top down i'm dictating the scenario and it, it's not creative but the point here is that um the group is going to riff on everything in the module and make up their own story and make up their own uh, actions and problem solving because they are not bound by a lot of rules that would restrict how they interact with these things. Um, it, there's a lot of room for improvisation and creative problem solving and uh, that ends up creating a lot of... Um, player interest after the fact of actually getting the item um yeah that's been my experience with uh, world of dungeons at least um yeah so uh as far as ideas go um maybe arnmunder's relatives are less zealous than arnmunder himself uh because arnmunder is he desire well he desires revenge against the gods over all else so maybe he has some other relatives who are a little bit more reasonable or more cowardly or you know some something that gives the players an angle to uh try something different than just like killing every giant they see which probably would not go very well for them and then finally some notes from the rules of macchiato monsters um, each goal is defined by players and referee together. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, collaborative uh, goal defining in this game. Um, the direction the party is going is set together by the players and the referee. It's not solely the players or the referee. Um, and it's not just get as much treasure as you possibly can. Um, so that, that means that we are going to downplay the importance of treasure relative to standard OSR games um, because it's not driving XP. So just having a few really cool uh, bits of treasure and then um, having treasure that is in the module for the purposes of environmental storytelling. Um, and then... Uh, provide suggestions for where to take the conversation uh, over goals. Um, so even though this is defined by the players and the referee, we can still give some uh, suggestions for what they might want to try. Um, we'll give uh, goal suggestions per area or session goals because we, we think that, or I think that probably each area will take about a session to clear. Um, We'll provide uh, quest goal suggestions. So that's something that is overarching for the whole, uh, the whole module. And then um, part of the Ein Herjar rules I'm thinking of including is that uh, when the character, uh, the PC is brought back to life by the Valkyrie, Uglehildr, um, she is gonna get some hold over them uh, which he can spend in order to define a goal for the party. Um, and because of the way the Ein Herjar mechanic works, the, um, the PC who is actually an Ein Herjar will not get levels from completing the goals. Uh, however, the rest of the party will. So there's going to be this kind of um, player level incentive for uh, the, yeah, there'll be a player level incentive for the non Ein Harriar to make these things happen, and there will be a character level incentive for the Ein Harriar to do it. Um, so even though the, the, the party will be working at cross purposes, those who are going to cooperate with the Valkyrie and those who might not, um, the the party uh will at or like all the players will have some reason to work towards these goals so there's going to be this this nice sort of uh tension between the party working against itself and the group working together 
Um, and there will be a storm level table that will use risk dice, as in Macchiato monsters, to represent the escalating severity of the weather. Um, at its most severe, the PCs will no longer be able to rest, except in the most secure locations, pu pushing them to the brink. Uh, and the most secure locations are going to be something that's defined by the GM or the referee, right? Uh, that's, it won't say, uh, you know, like location type, very secure, right? It, it, it'll be maybe something that is um, written in the, the description of the area, but making the ruling over what places are secure or not secure is something that goes to the referee. That's why they're called the referee. Um yeah so okay so that that's good that's all good uh so what i want to do today uh what i want to do today is i want to look at um a little bit of stone dragon mountain by sean nittner um and we're looking at this for ideas on how to write the first section of this module, this part here, scaling the mountain, because there's a lot of really good stuff in Stone Dragon Mountain on that subject. Uh, so let's let's take a look here. So, mountain locations. Um, yeah, so this is just gonna give us some uh, Oh, like this is really good, like snow blindness. But uh, I don't think this is really a glacial area, so that won't necessarily apply. But avalanches, I could definitely see. Um, yeah. Extreme cold. Okay. So let's uh, let's let's think here about how many entries we want in the random encounter table for this area. Let's take a, another look here at this. So this is a D10, but there's one two. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six entries on the table. This one has nine, I think. Okay. So I'm kind of feeling like, oh, does it have low oxygen levels um, in here? It, as in, does it have mountain sickness, is what you're suggesting, or altitude sickness? Um, I believe it probably does, yeah. Uh, thin air, right here. It does. Uh, so it has a particular, uh, that has a particular um, mechanical effect in Torchbearer, but that's going to be something that uh, will be probably difficult to. Um, mechanize in macchiato monsters and i'm not really sure we we necessarily want to uh so like yeah there's altitude sickness here um headaches fatigue and digestion dizziness nosebleeds drowsy drowsiness nausea and vomiting um so i i don't know i'm not i'm kind of on the fence as to whether this mountain is so high that you would end up with that problem um Yeah. And like, how would we mechanize it? I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not too sure if that's something I want on the table quite yet. I'm thinking about it. Um, okay. So let's see here i believe i believe i wrote a message to jason with an idea as to how many 
entries I was thinking of including in this table. So I was thinking about six to 12 entries. So I'm thinking probably a DR10, a risk die of a 10 sided risk die. Um, so if you roll a one to three, then it, it steps down to an eight. And then if you roll one to three again, it steps down to a six and then a four. Um, and so the, the lower the number, the more severe the consequences are gonna be. Um, yeah. And... Is that how I should write this? Let's, t let's just take another look at this. Yeah, like that's a pretty severe consequence right there. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's aim for that. The the lower the number, the more severe the consequence is going to be. So let's think about what we can have in our encounter table. Um, I guess I might as well just make a table right now. So it'll be two by 10, no, eight. I think eight is good for this area. Okay, there we go. I was like, wait, that's not eight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, and then formatting the table, something we're gonna wanna do. So at least make this, these cells have a ba black background. Table properties, cell background color black. And the text, text color should be white. There it is. Great. Okay, so this is going to be the role and the event. Role and event. And the text color is white. Okay, and then these can go center. All right. Um, so the roles will be uh, one to three, uh, then uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then this row we can delete. These need to be centered. And the events, okay. Uh, let's also reduce the size of this because we don't need that much for the just the roll. There we go. That's much better. All right. So um, maybe we want ten. Maybe we want ten. Uh, well, let's let's try to fill this up, and then if if we. Um, if we're like, oh, I've got so many more things I want to include, then, you know, we're gonna work with that. So let's see, let's take another look at Stone Dragon Mountain. Let's look at the avalanche, because that looks fun. An uncanny stillness followed by a rumbling as the ice pack breaks apart and quickly escalates into a torrential wave of ice and snow. Decide if the avalanche starts above the party and is crashing down on them or starts under their feet. If the avalanche comes from above, it will bury the party in snow and ice if they don't move fast to find cover. Finding nearby cover requires an OB3 scout test. Um, as suggested, failure for the scout roll 
uh, or as a suggested failure for the scout role, or if the avalanche happens under them, the adventurers are swept away in the ice and snow unless they can make an ob4 health test. So we don't need any of this stuff because this is very torchbearer. Um, whereas OSR will just be like, no, it's an avalanche. Uh, you figure it out. But um, we're going to say this is pretty bad. So um, avalanche uh, either above or below or underneath Neath the party. Uh, I just want to check something about style. Let's see here. Yeah, I think that's like fair in terms of diff in terms of density. Like this is fairly dense, um, fairly defined. So, hmm. So this is like defining how much damage the players take, or the PCs take. Um, so maybe I should include that. But let's see if there's any other tables that might be a good in indication here. Each time you take combat training, step up your hit die. And the number of hit dice you have. So you're starting with only six hate hit points. Um, that's good to know. and you can get one more so at most you could have at most you could have um 18 hit points if you spent at level one if you spent all your resources on hp okay and damage i believe is just denominated in in straight up dice Where's the weapons? Now oh, here it is, gear. Yeah, it's just dominated in, in straight up damage. So yeah, so if you are in an avalanche, we'll say, uh, um, And let's see, did Richard? Yeah, so characters must save or take D10 damage. Cool. So there's a fairly good chance that that could kill characters, which is kind of what we're looking at here. All right, so that's a bad one. I know another one I want here is like an eight. Um, we're gonna get uh, um, 
a party of curious elves. Uh, come to observe the storm. So, like, they 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 don't actually um, have any stake in this scenario. They don't really care. Uh, they're just kind of they're kind of there. But the players could do something interesting with them if they wanted to, right? Um, it's it's common to have uh, these sort of like weird weirdo encounters in the table um like you know you you can meet a random merchant in the keep of the borderlands right um it just happens to be there uh some missionaries happen to be there those are things that happen in uh in that adventure so i want some of that uh so another thing i think we might want to include is uh a Another party um, of fair weather company adventurers. But can we make this more interesting? So I'm thinking right away that I want more cells here. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a couple rows. We're gonna we're gonna do the D10. Take a look. So maybe we should include a stat block for these guys. I think that's fair. So another party of Fairweather Company adventurers um let's give them a situation a context uh and they are ah here's a good one um who have lost their supplies in the storm. So uh, let's see what Macchiato Monsters can do for us in terms of getting some kind of stat block here. I think it would be like within this human bastard level. One hit dice, armor DR4 to DR8, dagger D4, club D6, axe D8, morale DR4 to DR8. So we'll say like, um, okay. One hit die for sure. Uh, armor maybe dr6 but how do we do group combat in this game quick and dirty mass combat rules
So yeah, we'll just put the stat block for like... So maybe... So maybe we should include like a, get make these named characters and then their risk die I guess it's equivalent to their normal risk die. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fair. Okay. So, um, hit dice and so on. Yeah. Okay, so this includes the number of adventurers in, or the number of, of sort of mob enemies in the description. So I like that a lot. Let's do that. Uh, okay, so uh, one D, I would feel in a four, one D four fair weather company adventurers who have lost their uh, supplies in the storm. Um, and as far as their stat block goes, let's take a look at the monsters and grab this bastard, um, HD1. So let's do this, paste without formatting. Oh shit, it's control shift V, yeah, there. Uh, so this should be in italics. Uh, so we'll say armor is DR6. And for those of you who don't know, DR indicates a risk die. So if you roll one to three, then it steps down. And if it rolls, if you have a DR four and then it steps down again, it means it's destroyed or the character dies. Um, their weapons, like let's just say they do like D6 damage. Uh, so how do you declare that normally? Oh, it's like what kind of attack it is. Um, so like uh, melee weapons, d6, morale of, um, they're probably pretty messed up because they are without supplies. So we'll say they have a morale of dr4. Yeah. Um, so party of curious elves come, uh, so this should be, uh, like one D six curious elves. <laughs> come to observe, observe the storm. Um, and we'll give them a stat block. They'll be certainly better off than the uh, Fairweather Company adventurers for sure. So let's take a look at that. Um, uh, 
I don't know if we're quite planar explorer. That's a little intense. So what did these uh, what did these numbers indicate? Oh, that's how many there are. Okay. Right. So this may be kind of what we're looking at in terms of difficulty. D eight gob hoggle and bushy. So yeah, we'll say like a D six. You got an HD of two for sure. I can see that. Uh, armor of DR eight. Yeah. Uh, weapons will be like you know, uh, elven, elven crafted, elven crafted swords. Um, and morale of like DR eight. They're not gonna be fucked with. So HD2, armor of DR8, uh, we'll see D D8 damage. Elven craft swords, long swords, right? D8, uh, morale of DR10. Maybe DR eight. I think that's fair. They're 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 a little a little weaker than some crazy powerful hobgoblins. All right, cool. So that's two off of the uh, the the. Those are like the nice ones, right? Like oh maybe they could maybe we could get along with them. Um. um all right, let's let's get to some some more serious kind of stuff that could happen here on the on the mountain side. Mm -hmm. Um So we have the avalanche um, I don't want to go with weather things because that's going to be on the weather table. Snow leopard, snow blindness. I feel like that's another weather thing. So what would be on the mountain side? So this dwarven mountain, there's a big road that goes up it and has fallen into disarray. I could definitely see a rickety bridge. A rickety bridge that, uh, a rick, oh, giant goats or gargoyles. Uh, 
Yeah, I could I could see both of those. Um, I'm kind of into the giant goats idea. I like that. Um, so let let's say a rickety bridge uh, that traverses a um, so let's let's talk about cliff faces let's talk about some some vocabulary here Escarpment. Ah, uh, yes. So I don't think this would be relevant. See, the the good thing I'm looking for here is like when you're writing something like this, it generally pays to look up like geography terms to make something like more specific and interesting than just saying like, oh, it traverses a chasm. Like, okay, no, like maybe there's a really cool word for a chasm that we can use. Like scree. I, there's so much scree uh, near the mountains in my hometown. Um, so... This is not exactly relevant, but it's something I'll probably talk about in another entry. So let's let's look up let's look up chasm. A deep cleft in the surface of the plaza, planet built a bridge over the chasm. A gorge? A gorge could be good. Uh, several, several rickety bridges across windy crags. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, windy. Okay, so crag. Let's let's look up specifically. A crag is a rocky hill or mountain, generally isolated from other high ground. Crags are formed when a glacier or ice sheet passes over an area that contains a particularly resistant rock formation. Um, so you can describe things as craggy, but it's not exactly the right term here. So I think it would be good to say several rickety bridges um, strung across gorges and chasms. Yeah. Yeah, I'm liking this. So thanks for that suggestion there. So let's say um, a series of rickety rope bridges strung across uh, gorges and chasms. Uh, yeah, so like... Uh, character uh, char characters must save or fall to their death or, or take uh, let's say like d12 falling damage
Okay, that's good. Um, now let's let's get those goats in there. Let's get those giant goats. So I'm liking the giant goat. Um, let's let's just develop this a little bit more. It's a really good idea. So bucka is an interesting word. I don't think we really have any old English, old English dictionary. I think we probably don't have a great word for this, but let's, let's take a look. Let's find some cool words. Big. Uh, search. Uh, giant. Search. Ent. Ent bucka. <laughs> Ent, Enten, Enten Bucca, Enten Bucca. Uh, one D. Let's look at some equivalent sort of monsters in here mm, something like this maybe one one I don't know goats kind of travel in packs say d4 D4, D4, no, 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 don't auto capitalize on me, okay, there, D4, Oten, Oten, Bucca. uh, D4 Otenbucka, um, giant and terrible goats of Shathurazan. And give them a stat block.
Yeah, might be the best. Where was that guy? Ah. Shield goats, D20. <laughs> So let's say like HD three. Okay, let's just let's just manipulate this stat block. So th HD three. Um, they could charge for like 2d8. Um, their hooves do, yeah, d6, maybe, maybe d8. And morale of dr8, that seems fine. Uh, giant and terrible goats of Shatherazan. Uh, known to mm. uh, driven driven into a frenzy by the storm yeah fucking yeah okay good so we got some giant goats um Want some more environmental stuff now? So we got chasms, um, we got avalanche, uh, we got. Oh, what else could we do here? Um, I think I might actually move this down. And then here I'm going to put. Um, Blizzard's going to be on the weather. That'll be on the weather table. Um, definitely going in there. But you see, we can get this plus a blizzard. <laughs> um, I'm thinking we're, we're like, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about it. Um, uh, a a um, A daunting, uh, a don't what do you call scree scree deposit? Is there something a little bit less scientific sounding? Pile of scree? No. Daunting. Collection. A daunting deposit. A daunting mass. Yeah, I kind of like that. A daunting mass of scree that has uh, covered the remains of the old dwarven highway. Uh, yeah. Cool. So that's just going to be something that you know, like, uh, the GM can be like, oh, well, what, how do you deal with this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, all right. Uh, now this should be something pretty bad. Um, thinking, like, maybe...
maybe like an ogre that you could run into. How about like a harpies? I mean, I think harpies would be in having a really bad time in the storm, right? Like they would just probably die because of all the terribleness going on. I'm thinking like maybe like a a storm sorcerer uh, caught in uh, caught in an uncontrollable ecstasy ecstasy yeah Oops, there we go. Um, so he's gonna be a problem. Uh, bestows the gift of lightning on passers by. Um, so we probably got some kind of wizard in here. Sorcerer. Could work as a base. Let's do that. So, um, HD5 seems pretty reasonable. Okay. So, HD5, uh, armor of DR10, maybe DR8, um, stone staff D10. So, we'll say, uh, lightning bolts d10 um, does dark curses does uh, um, like Otherworldly Howls uh, has a morale of DR10, I think, because this, this guy is, is like in an ecstasy, so. Cool. Um, so maybe we'll give this guy a name. Think about that later. Uh, and then the one to three, Wind Walls. Ooh, yeah. Like maybe some, like an air elemental? That could be pretty cool. Um, uh, 
Um, A horrifying. Well, this is a thing that they they have to be able to roll multiple times. So let's let's think about that. Uh, let's think about these tables. So in this case, they're saying that if you roll a one to three, uh, recently cleared or in start of DR12. Okay. Where foxes possibly friendly? That's that's pretty cool. Um, like it could be like uh, where lynxes or something like that. Um. Oh, okay. It's probably gonna be this. Roll d12 twice, mixing the results. Okay, let's let's look at this. This is a, so this is um, so what this means is we don't include the disposition of the monster. We just include the type of thing it is and then this table will determine the disposition okay so it will just be a storm sorcerer So like elven travelers or So yeah, so if they roll a monster, then it will they will roll on this table. Otherwise otherwise they will roll um otherwise they'll they'll just do the thing. Uh okay. So it should be uh so this this is not Stone Dragon Mountain. This is um 
the slopes of Shathurazan encounters. Um, uh, PC or uh, roll on this table uh, if monster or if encounter is rolled check encounter table for disposition in macchiato monsters And let's just, I don't know, for now I'm thinking maybe we go to the D12. I don't know if we'll have room for it though, because I would like to put some kind of like where links is, that could be fun. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll just stick with it like this for now. Because I'm worried that if I go to 12, I'm gonna run out of space. Okay. So that's done. That's the encounter table. Um, let's think about the weather table. Because that's going to be a big one for this whole thing. And this is something we can use um, a lot of Stone Dragon Mountain for. So we're looking at... The weather table in Macchiato Monsters is a D12, which seems totally reasonable to me. I think we want to have those 12 entries. And we want actually 12 entries, not just, yeah. So we need an extra, so this will be, this will be one, two, three, oops, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we need two more. Oh, 10, 11, and one more, 12. Okay. So the worst possible I think weather will be thunder snow. Um, the next worst would be something like um, Wow, look at this, look at this list of storms. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so like maybe a Ooh. 
maybe like um Hurricane force winds. Winds. I need to look up wind. So yeah, like driving snow. Say for blizzards under Stone Dragon Mountain. Powerful winds. Sounds good. So let's say uh, white out white out conditions. Visibility extremely limited. Um, blizzard. Uh, extreme cold. Save or take D4 damage. This could be put up here. Um, force 
wins. Uh, rest impossible. Thunder snow. What kind of effect could that have? Heavy snowfall rates in the range of five to 10 centimeters per hour. Um, okay. Thunder snow, um, extremely limited. No, no, um, near zero visibility. Uh, cold and lightning uh, cold and lightning uh, save or take d8 damage Rest is impossible, uh, extreme cold, blizzard. Uh, what else we can, can we have here? Um, um, ice storm. Movement, extremely dangerous without equipment. Um, and then we could have like, um, Hailstorm, snow glare. Um, yeah, snow glare could be like one of the lower possibilities I could see. Um, so we'll say like, uh, so blizzard, I think, goes up here. Hailstorm. Oops. Uh, Hailstorm. Uh, characters out of shelter must save. Or no, you just you don't save. You just take. Take uh, D six damage. Um, okay, like severe health hailstorm. say snow glare um, would be like maybe up here snow glare 
uh, visibility impossible uh, or very difficult in open areas. Um, So like let's say like wet downbursts uh, movement very difficult Uh, unpredictable effects. Um, and like down here, we'll just say like rainstorm. Um, uh, basic windstorm so yeah maybe windstorm and then rainstorm um, and uh, fog um, ice fog. I like that hail fog. That sounds terrible. Um, so let's move this. Visibility low, uh, rest impossible in open areas. Okay. I think that's a pretty good storm table. <laughs> it's like all bad. There's no, there's no good weather. Um, yeah. And this is like, uh, so it says in Macchiato Monsters, on a one to three, um, 
Okay, so we'll do this just to have it there. Cool. Into it. Into it. I like it. All right, good. Um, so we got an encounter table for Shathirazan. Uh, and we got a weather table. So I think that's some nice progress for today. Uh, I think I'm going to end the stream here. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, I'll have more again soon. Probably something with a little bit more talking and a little bit less musing. Uh, so I will see you then.